Hey friends, it's Shannon. Today for our daily check-in, I hope you guys are all doing well and that you had a safe and enjoyable um, holiday weekend. I'm here on my back porch again and um, wanted to introduce to you the theme for the next couple of weeks, the next several weeks actually, of um, that we have sort of noodled around, no pun intended, you're about to see why I use that pun. But with some ideas that we were having, um, Catherine Ann was visiting her um, family on the beach and they, uh, she started thinking about church cookbooks and she may tell you more about that on her um, check in with you on this topic. But so we started talking on staff about um, recipes and sharing those um, things that we've been cooking and how fun it is to um, hear from each other about what it is that folks are cooking and enjoying these days and um, you know several weeks ago we talked about um, Catherine Ann and I talked a lot about grilled cheeses and you guys all gave me some great recipes and ideas for grilled cheese and I also shared with you um, my grandmother's pea salad bowl that um, that means a lot to me. So clearly food has been on our minds and especially, you know, as we think about um, how we are getting our food these days and sometimes it's easier than others to get the food that we want or um, for recipes and such or whether it's being able to order takeout and, or whether it's being able to go and sit on a patio of a restaurant and enjoy what seems like a normal meal, which those seem to be fewer and further between, um, and even more so now, unfortunately. But nevertheless, um, there is some fun things to do about cooking. And um, so our theme for the next couple of weeks is welcome to the table. And one of the things that has been really powerful for me as we um, gather for worship all in our own homes is being able to have communion in our houses, in the intimacy of our living rooms um, or around our own kitchen tables and um, coming together and sharing the Lord's Supper. It's really an incredible thing um, for me to think about all of you in your homes sharing God's meal together in that way. So I hope it's been a good thing for you, but it's also made us think about all the ways that sharing a meal, gathering around a table is so important to us as a family of faith. I know that I miss our Wednesday night dinners, I miss our potluck um, Sunday lunches and our pancake brunches and all of those things where we gather around and we fill our bodies, but we also fill our um, souls with one another's company. So we're going to share some of our favorite recipes and stories about food and the, the things that we're eating and <clears throat> the things that, um, the ways that we're getting our food and some of those kind of stories with you guys. And some of you are going to be our special guests on um, <clears throat> our check-ins, especially um, Lauren Townsend will, and her girls are going to... Um, share something with us so make sure you tune in that day because lauren townsend is an amazing cook if you didn't know that already so there's my little plug for lauren um but i don't know if you know it but we have st luke's has some cookbooks i pulled out this historic one and it's actually the second edition so i don't have the first edition but this was from 1977 a cookbook filled with fabulous recipes and i can guarantee you that there are some recipes that you have eaten at a potluck that are in this cookbook. Um, and then there was the um, Manna from St. Luke's cookbook that came out in, you know what, I don't know if this one is dated. It's got to be dated. Um, it has to be dated, right? Um, it doesn't say. How crazy is that? That it doesn't give us a date. So one of you St. Luke's Presbyterian women out there, tell us when this manna from St. Luke's was published. And then most recently in 2015, Presbyterian women put out this one. And I know for a fact that you've eaten recipes out of this because we had folks bring their favorite recipes um, to a 
potluck dinner, potluck lunch that came out of this um, cookbook. So there you go. Um, so we don't really print cookbooks much anymore, which I kind of lament because that's been one of my favorite things about COVID um, sheltering in place is cooking out of cookbooks and also then passing those recipes along to Maddie, who has become a great cook, and to my um, niece in Perry, Georgia, who has a young family and um, working on um, cooking and really healthy meals. And so it's been fun to share those meals. And one of those meals that came my way is something I wanna share with you today that um, we have really enjoyed around here a lot. And it's actually part of a bigger recipe, but this is a super simple, easy thing to cook um, for lunch, or you can cook the whole recipe and I'll put it in the notes, the comments. But, and you can tell I am not a cooking show like aficionado when it comes to this so this is not very professional in my cooking because I'm going to show you the box the noodles remember I said we're going to noodle around with the recipe so these um, stir fry, fry rice noodles so you boil those according to package directions and then um, when while those are boiling you take some garlic and you chop that up and you take some butter and you put the butter in the pan then you um, let that melt. Then you chop up some garlic and you put that in there. And also I've started putting a little bit of diced up ginger in there because it's good for the soul. Um, and then when the noodles are done, drain them off. You put them in with the garlic and the butter. And then you add, here's the secret ingredient, some coconut it's supposed to be coconut milk, but all I had is coconut cream right now in the pantry. So coconut milk in there, um, you get it all saucy, and then you um, put it out and serve it on a plate, just like you would any other kind of pasta. And then I'll also tell you my bias. I like to um, chop up some cilantro or some fresh basil, which I have a bunch. If you are in need of basil, or actually if you're in need of ginger, call me because I have a bunch of it right now and it's all about to, the basil's about to hit its, um, put past its prime. So anyway, basil or cilantro on top of it chopped up and then squirt a little lime on it because everything is better with lime and, um, and eat. It is so good y'all. Um, I know you could also do like crushed up pecans or almonds on it if you wanted something um, a little crunchy to go along with it, but there it is. That is one of the favorite things that we've been eating around here. It's super simple. Just some um, rice noodles, some coconut milk, garlic, butter. That's the simple way to do it. Add a little lime, a little ginger, a little um, basil and cilantro. And I'm pointing over there because that's where all my basil is. But <laughs> there you have it. It's super easy. So we hope that the next few weeks, this is just for fun and to connect with one another at the table, at our tables, at your table. And if you have recipes you wanna share with us, I would love for you to do that. You can do it in the comments. You can send them to me and I'll start to compile them. Um, and maybe we can have our own like fun COVID cookbook. When this is all over, we could um, make something good out of kind of a rotten situation, right? So y'all share those recipes. We do want to hear them and I'm always up for a new recipe. Um, just as you can tell, keep it simple for me. All right, friends, we love you and we cannot wait to gather around tables together again. And in the meantime, let us remember every time we're gathering at our table to celebrate the Lord's Supper that we indeed really are connected continuously and in wonderful and mysterious ways by God's Spirit. All right, y'all take care. Talk to you soon. For the life of me, I cannot figure out how to turn this off. <laughs>